My name is Eloise. Thank you for joining us for another lesson. So far in coordinate geometry, we have spoken about line segments, shapes, and static points, points that haven't moved. They've been fixed to one location in the Cartesian plane. In this lesson, we are going to look at transformation geometry. In transformation geometry, we describe what happens to an object, a shape, a line or a point when it is transformed or moved to a new position in space. There are three types of transformations. Today we are going to look at one of them called translations. By the end of the lesson you should be able to define a translation. Describe the translation of a shape and translate a shape and label its new position. Rufilwe is with us again for this lesson. I've sent her off to the police station for this lesson. Hello Rufilwe, what are you up to? Oh, hi there. I'm just wondering what I'm doing here with these policemen. Well, they're going to help us learn about translations. Great, I love translations. Let's see, I can do English, Zulu, Tswana, and a little bit of French here and there. What languages do you want? Not that kind of translation, Rufilwe. This kind of translation takes a point, or line or shape in the Cartesian plane and moves it to a new position. But if it moves, how are we supposed to find it? You know how big the Cartesian plane is. You could really get lost out there. <laughs> Don't worry, we will keep track of what happens. How are we going to do that? Well, it's a bit like when you have a tracking device in your car. You can track the changing position of the car. We can also predict where it will go and where it is at any one moment. Get out of your vehicle. Keep your hands where I can see them. That's so cool. But what has tracking cars got to do with translations? Translation is about describing how a shape has moved along a straight line from one position to another. The tracking system works on a grid of points similar to our Cartesian plane. And in the same way that we can track the movements of a car with a tracking device, we will track the movements of shapes in the Cartesian plane. But first, I think we need to learn a bit more about translations before we can track cars. Since the tracker shows cars as triangles on the screen, let's start with a triangle. We need to describe the position of the triangle. We do that by describing the position of its vertices. Can you do that for us, Rafilwe? Okay. P is at 2, 2. The vertex labeled Q is at 3, 4. And the third vertex at R is 5, 1. Thanks, Rafilwe. Now we have a triangle PQR and we have identified the coordinates of each of its vertices. Now watch this. I can translate this triangle to a new position on the Cartesian plane. When a shape moves, we need to change the labels to show that. P changes to P prime, Q to Q prime and R changes to R prime. So, if I want to see what happened to the triangle, I can find the position of the new vertices called P prime, Q prime, and R prime, and compare them to the old positions. That's it exactly. The coordinates of R prime are negative one, negative five. Can you give me the new coordinates of the other two triangle vertices? Yes, I've got them. P prime is negative four, negative four and Q prime is negative three, negative two. Excellent. 
The old triangle PQR has moved to a new position. We found the coordinates of the vertices and we have been able to plot the new position. We labeled the new vertices P prime, Q prime and R prime so that we can discuss what happened to each point. We call the new triangle an image of the old one. It is like a copy. We are going to find out what kind of transformation has happened to produce the image. So we want to know how the triangle moved to get to its new position. Look at these two triangles. Do you notice that the shape hasn't changed? Although the shape has only shifted diagonally across. On the Cartesian plane, we describe it as both a shift down and a shift to the left. This kind of movement along a straight line is called a translation. The point P has moved down 6 units in the vertical direction and 6 units back in the horizontal direction. The point Q has also moved down 6 units in the vertical direction and 6 units back in the horizontal direction. The same thing has happened to R and every other point that makes up the triangle. The image of triangle PQR is a copy which hasn't changed in any way except in position. You seem quite sure about that. How do you know it hasn't changed? I see you are checking up on me, Rufilwe. <laughs> Let's measure the line segments on each triangle to see whether that is true. If you measure PQ and P'Q', prime, they are equal. Similarly, QR and Q'R' prime are equal. And finally, PR and P'R' prime are equal. So, it's true. The two triangles are exactly the same. Now tell me, did anything else beside the position change when we translated the triangle? No, it stayed the same. It was an exact copy. Now let's do another one. Here is a triangle for you to translate. Let us call the triangle RST. The coordinates of R, S and T are negative 2, negative 3, 1, 4 and negative 1, 1. OK, let's translate it. How much and in what direction? Let's translate the triangle minus 3 units vertically and 4 units horizontally. I'll start with point R. It must move 3 units down and 4 units to the right. Then I call it R prime. If S goes down 3 and across 4, it'll be here. And call it S prime. Then T goes down 3 and across 4 to over here. And I call it T prime. Then I join the vertices and that's the new image. We can also show translations like this without using a diagram. We can just work with the coordinates. What do you mean? Well, take the coordinates of R negative 2, negative 3. What are the coordinates of R prime after the translation? They are 2, negative 6. Now let me show you something from R negative 2, negative 3. We moved 3 units down. That is like subtracting 3 from the y value. The y value changes from negative 3 by minus 3 units. So the new y value is negative 6. We went 4 units across, which is like adding 4 to the x value. So the x value changes to negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. Hey, that's the same answer that I worked out on the plane. Exactly. You worked with the shapes on the Cartesian plane. I worked with the coordinates and the value of the change or translation. Both these methods get us to the correct translation. 
The more methods you know and understand, the greater the chance you have of being correct. I get it. That's so cool. Let's do a quick recap of what we have done. A translation is a change in the position of a shape as it is shifted along a straight line without changing its shape or size. Each point on the shape is translated by the same amount in the same direction. We can show a translation on the Cartesian plane or with the coordinates only. Now, can we get back to tracking cars? And it looks like it's just in time too. Control Sierra Delta 22 responding. I've got to run. See you guys later. Oh, and thanks for the help. Got to go catch the bad guys. <laughs> Be careful! I guess that just leaves me to give you your task for today. Plot the points P, 3, 2, Q, 5, 6 and M, negative 2, 4. Translate triangle P, Q, M, 2 units left and 5 units down. Write down the coordinates of the image you have made. Next time, we can look at some other transformations that we use in coordinate geometry. Till then, goodbye.